Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back for another One Piece review. The Voyage continues with episode 1095, so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to join the council and become a part of the crew. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get right on into it. All right, once again, thank you all for joining me for another week. As always, hope everybody's doing fantastic. So for this episode, we're gonna do a twin one. So we're gonna be discussing 1094 and 1095. So you wanna hop straight over to the 1095 discussions. There will be timestamps and chapters in the description. So for 1094, since not much happened this episode, I just wanted to give a quick little mini recap and give my thoughts as I go. So, we start the episode off rejoining Luffy's group, Straw Hat Group A, as they're running for their lives, running away from the Kuma policeman who is trying to unalive them. Thankfully, the group does end up getting away from Kuma because Bonnie uses her powers on the group to end up to turning them into children, making them unrecognizable um, from Kuma. Quick side note, I think a cool awakening ability for Bonnie's Devil Fruit will be um, to give her the ability to de-age and age anything, not just people. So for example, if there's like a door with treasure locked behind it, Bonnie can de-age the door to the point where it's not there anymore or to just like the point where um, it's weak enough for her to like just kick it down, for example. And also maybe even theoretically, she'll have the ability to de-age attacks past their point of existence. That one's a little crazy though. <laughs> From there, we move on to Lilith taking the rest of the crew, Straw Hat Group B, to Dr. Vegapunk's lab for questioning. During this time, um, the rest of the crew, minus Zoro and Brooke, also got their new Egghead outfits. So remember everybody, it's not a new arc until the fit change, keep that in mind. But I will say the entire sequence from, you know, flying around on Vega Force One to everybody else getting their new egg head off is definitely has to be my favorite part of this episode. I loved all the little aerial shots we got of um, egg Future Island, as well as we did get a nice um, outside look of the main laboratory. So that was nice as well. And I do think it's cool as hell how Dr. Vegapunk recreated the um the sea clouds from sky pia that's really dope i miss sky pia in this setting so much but yeah so um getting to see the sky clouds again that was really cool as well but yeah that whole sequence definitely i think takes the cake for me for my favorite um scene for 1094 but from there um straw hat group b grow goes into the laboratory where they are faced with a new seraphim type this one modeled after our boy jimbe and we end the episode off with a shocking reveal from my boy Shaka, and that reveal is that Dr. Vegapunk actually knows Dragon. This is crazy, and it also um, makes me ask the question, if you know Dragon, why the hell did you turn Kuma into a cyborg if you're friends with Dragon? It just doesn't make sense. Even, I don't really, like, even if it, um, no matter at what point you became friends, right? Because one, if, you know, Doctor, if Dragon became friends with uh, Vegapunk after they, or acquaintance, maybe not necessarily friends, right? Acquaintance after he um, turned Kuma to a cyborg, why would he do that? You know, why would you be, um, become acquainted with somebody who um, did this to your friend? And then two, if it was beforehand, why would you turn Kuma into a cyborg if he is your friend? I guess that just goes back to the point on um, my point I made, you know, at the beginning of this arc where, um, where I asked, is dr vegapunk truly working with the government against you know with his own free will or you know is he being forced to do this essentially we still don't really know that but um during that during the reveal of shaka revealing that he does know dragon he also mentioned to dragon that he's going to die soon so does that also mean that he knows that the government is coming to kill him or is this something completely different definitely um looking forward to seeing seeing more about that but definitely definitely hype for dragon we don't know too much about dragon's backstory so we get some dragon lore this arc that'll be dope as hell that'll be dope as hell but enough with 1094 let's hop into the 1095 discussion all right one piece 1095 and we start the episode off with straight hands we get to see the djembe um seraphim in action and i must say yeah, given a water devil fruit to a fishman is diabolical it's straight down diabolical and as well as it's so cool because now that i'm thinking about it 
I think this is our first time seeing somebody with a water devil fruit, you know, in the series, which is actually kind of crazy to think about, you know, how long, you know, One Piece has been around. We haven't seen somebody with a war, you know, with water powers yet, which is kind of crazy, you know, other than like, you know, regular fishmen, but we haven't seen like, no water devil fruit yet. He's probably saying, you know, the best for last, stuff like that. But, you know, we got to see it and you give it to a fishman? You give a fishman water devil fruit powers? That's, that's freaking ridiculous, bro and the brief you know, little stuff that we did had they were nice i enjoyed it also there's one thing i did find weird about during this fight scene when they when they first got started up frankie made a remark saying that those powers belong to dot 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 they you know he didn't fully say who it was so now i'm thinking it gets me thinking who the hell was frankie even talking about because when i try and think about it there's there's only very few people who i can even Think about that resembles the type of stuff like that he was doing but it was no we like i said before we never even seen a water devil for use before so like you know who the hell was frankie even referring to when he mentioned that i just found that i just thought that was odd but you know it looked cool definitely cool to see the um the seraphim in action and it's also nice to know that dr vegapunk can upgrade them past you know just giving them lasers and stuff like that i guess you know what makes sense that he also gave them devil fruit abilities but this is the first time you know we didn't see that with the other two seraphims that we um that we saw so you know it's cool that we actually you know that we actually know that he gave these guys devil fruits and now it's going to be interesting to see if he gave the other ones devil fruits because oh that'd be crazy then like for example the boy hancock one did you kind of did you recreate her devil fruit or did you give her a completely new one so that'll be interesting to see but also um they teased the other seraphims in this episode as well you know with the number doors that's in the in that room they was in you know where they had the one through seven so uh rightfully so i'm assuming that they replaced these seven warlords with these seven seraphims so i can't wait to see which ones they decided to go with because as we all know there was many different warlords throughout the time here so it's going to be interesting to see which um which warlords did they decide to make a seraphim model after because it'll be interesting to see if they did a uh, a law one for example like you know did you did you make a law seraphim that'll be kind of cool but yeah definitely looking forward to seeing the rest of the seraphim models and oh, can't wait till the zoro versus the mihawk one that's gonna that's gonna be crazy because i'm kind of i was gonna wait to talk about this but because we know what's coming sooner or later um you know you know we all thought that the zoro versus mihawk was like some in-game type stuff and still so i guess you can say egg cake is kind of like in-game type areas right because i mean we're finally yonko's we're, we're finally yonko crew right now so i guess you could you could say we're in um in game now but yeah to, i get you he's basically gonna have to go against mihawk without going against before he has to actually go against mihawk it's kind of like practicing in a sense even though we of course you know this copy of mihawk won't be the the real deal of course you know i'm pretty sure the real deal mihawk is gonna be 10 times worse than we know what some copy can do but it, i'm pretty sure we're gonna start seeing like actual moves and stuff that mihawk can do and just you know just steal that raw strength and sword plus just and sword play that mihawk has in general is just gonna be an issue to deal with so definitely I'm, oh i'm looking forward to that fight oh i'm looking forward to that fight and i'm also like i said i'm looking forward to see what other seraphim models they made that they made as well and see which ones that we have um and other fights that we got that we got to get into because i'm pretty sure hopefully you know that all the fights that's going to be happening in this season it's not on that intro so hopefully that's not the case and we're going to get to see you know there's some more stuff that we're going to get to see as well yeah but yeah that'll be cool but yeah also in this episode we got introduced to the rest of the vega punks and that being um edison pythagoras and york um, I don't have too much to say about the rest of the Vegapunks, but I do find them cool, especially the whole situation where they're connected on a deeper sense. If I understood the episode correctly, it looks like Greed slash York is solely dedicated to, you know, doing mundane stuff like eating, using a restroom and sleeping and stuff like that for all the Vegapunks so they don't have to, which is kind of crazy. So like there is, they're more than the connected. They're, they're connected more in the sense that like, oh, I can, I can see you know what he's seeing at, at the same time like i said you know it's they, they, it's almost like they're truly one being seal even though they're split apart it's kind of crazy and cool at the same time <laughs> but um if i had to rank my favorite vega punk so far i'd probably give it to edison even though it's been no short-lived i just 
I think he seems cool. You know, he's you know he's the thinker of the group. You know, the inventor looks like probably like one of the main inventors of the group out of all the Vegapunk. So that's cool. And also, my assumption was correct earlier in one of my early reviews. I mentioned um, how I hope that we get we're gonna get more Devil Fruit lore this season because we you know we're coming to one of the main person who has most knowledge on Devil Fruits in the verse at this point, right? Um, Doctor Vegapunk because he's done numerous different you know experiments with um devil fruits and stuff like that but there was a scene during the york scene where you know we're getting introduced to york and how you know how, how she plays a role with the vegapunks and everything pythagoras mentions um you know to all the researchers bring bring me all the data you have on devil fruits so i'm hoping that's a um, indication that we're going to be getting some more information about devil fruits later a little bit later on in the arc definitely definitely excited for that Ladies and gentlemen, get your notepads and your whiteboards out because next week we're going to be learning more information about the Void Century. At the end of 1095, Shaka made another shocking reveal in that there used to be an advanced kingdom just like Egghead 900 years ago in the past, aka the Void Century. And next week in 1096, it seems we're going to be learning more about said kingdom. But with all that being said, um, for next week's discussion, in the 1096 discussion, I also want to do an overview of everything we know so far about the Void Century on top of, you know, learning um, new, whatever new information is going to come from 1096 and potentially um, in 1097 as well. But for this week, for this discussion, I want to bring forward two new theories. All right. So if you guys remember back in my row pony glyph theory for where the last um, location of the last row pony glyph could be, right? I mentioned that one of the off wall <laughs> places could potentially be um, some lost Lunarian city, right? So, at, you know, at the end of this episode, we just got revealed that there used to be another advanced kingdom like Egghead. And on top of that, we saw the giant robot, robot that Luffy and Chopper stumbled upon, right? So is that a hint that Egghead is actually that said island and no, that said kingdom, right? It's just, you know, drastically different now. And then on top of that, in 1094, Lilith mentioned that the entire island is powered by fire and that she mentioned that if she could gather enough energy, she could make, um, you know, a sun, right? So basically, long story short, my theory is, is AK actually indeed the Lost Lunarian City that we've been looking for? Well, not necessarily that we've been looking for, but that I've been talking, that I was just talking about recently. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, one, you know, all these this Lunarian DNA got to be coming from somewhere that um, Vegapunk is using for all these seraphim. He got to get it from somewhere. What if it's, you know, right here on Egghead? Because Egghead could be that Lunarian city. And then, you know, we got the hint that the whole island is powered by fire and everything. So that's, you know, connecting to the, that's connected to the Lunarians right there. And then tie it all in, the second theory I had was, you know, in 1094, Bonnie also mentioned that her dad kuma said that he was part of a special tribe so is kuma a motherfucking lunarian is is that the case is kuma a lunarian because then you know they uh back in back when they we first saw cp0 when he was when it was bringing the kuma bot back um back to egghead he had wings and everything so is that the original kuma and like now somehow maybe through you know his dna and stuff vegapunk was able to give him his wing backs and that's why he got his wings but for those who saying you know if kuma is lunarian why he didn't originally have wings to begin with for all we know maybe all lunarians don't come with wings or something who knows or maybe he um had to get rid of them or something or maybe they just de-evolved over time i don't know as the because you know the their race was completely obliterated so maybe you know the bloodline got um dwindled down and this then it got to a point where they didn't have wings anymore or something like that i don't know but he you know he bonnie mentioned that he was part of a special tribe one of the re most recent special tribes that we just learned about was the lunarians and now we got all these ties with um egghead and the lunarians and everything so it, everything might just everything just just tying together in my opinion in my humble opinion so um kuma could be could be a lunarian and AK could be that said Lost Lunarian City as well. 
but yeah <laughs> that's everything that i had for this week so once again next week i want to go over a overview of everything we know about the voice entry um i got a I got a few of my notes down here now i gotta finish um brushing it up i'll be ready by the end of but yeah so i want to do that as well so yeah I'm, I'm definitely excited and pumped for 1096 um learning more lore about that i can't wait for it so see you all next week thank you all for joining